Hey everyone, wanted to make an updated uh, intro to Triton video here. Um, so wanted to cover two points. Uh, so first of all, just from a very generic intro to Triton, uh, I think one point to be clear on is that Triton is both a language for programming uh, GPU kernels as well as a compiler. So there's two parts to it. But the main advantage of Triton is direct control over the two types of GPU memory. So SRAM or on-chip or shared memory and HBM, which is your global GPU memory. So um, with that, uh, let's get into some GPU fundamentals that I think will be helpful as you start to embark on coding up uh, Triton kernels, because uh, in my opinion, a, a very solid uh, Triton kernel, uh, performant kernel, really means a co-design between the hardware of the GPU itself and the Triton um, language or algorithm. And putting those two together is really what gives you the, the max performance. So let's show a very simplified view of the GPU overview. So here we are. Uh, there's really two things to call out here at the top. We have basically what you could call simplistically where Triton lives uh, on chip. And then down here we have our DRAM, which is our global uh, GPU memory. So when you have a GPU and somebody says my GPU has 40 gigs, 80 gigs, etc., this is the DRAM or the HBM high bandwidth memory that they're referring to. Uh, now this is effectively where PyTorch, when you say to CUDA, for example, it moves your model into here into this global memory. Uh, but the actual processing work is happening here. So these are SMs or streaming multiprocessors on an A100. There's 108 of them. This is where the actual work is done, and it's a combination of the streaming multiprocessor and its compute cores, as well as the L1, which is the uh, both the data cache, but more importantly, a, a SRAM shared memory that's shared by all of the threads operating within the streaming multiprocessor. So to make a very uh, kind of overarching simplification here, we can say that Triton basically lives here uh, with the streaming multiprocessors and the shared memory and gives you direct control over these SMs and their shared memory. Um, by contrast, PyTorch Eager primarily lives here, which is your HPM global memory. Uh, and to put in bigger context, if you had an AI model, for example, you would load it up in CPU, move it over to uh, GPU global memory here, and then from there, as instructions come in, uh, data and instructions would get moved to the SMs to do the work and then bring it back. Now, <laughs> one of the most important uh, advantages uh, that Triton gives you control over is the fact that you have um, direct control over the movement from HPM to here. And so you can do a lot more uh, intelligent things. And by way of a very simple example, let's imagine that this is your home over here. This is your store over here. And you say, I want to go. Uh, pick up milk and um, boba tea, for example. So in PyTorch Eager, everything gets executed one single line at a time. So first request would be to go to the store and get some milk. So go from here, get the milk, come back. Next in instruction would be get some boba tea. So again, go from here to the store, get the boba tea, come back. Now the problem is uh, this data movement here between the global memory and the SMs is very bandwidth constrained. Uh, we'll see that's actually one of the biggest problems in GPU uh, programming. And um, <coughs> by contrast uh, with Triton, if we know, for example, that we are going to get both milk and tea, we can go from the home to the store, get the milk and the tea, or do the processing here, and then bring everything back and avoid, in this case, a, a duplicate round trip for no reason. So that would be an, a very simplistic example of a fusion kernel. Now, to be fair, uh, PyTorch 2.0 has the to Torch compile which actually will decompose a lot of your PyTorch Eager into Triton kernels. So some of these simple fusions can already be done automatically. But <laughs> as we'll see, you can get a lot more sophisticated algorithms, such as, for example, flash attention, uh, different uh, decompositions for matrix multiplication that can be a lot more smarter uh, and basically overcome some of the, the primary limitations of GPU uh, programming or weaknesses in the GPU, which is this memory bandwidth constraint relative to the amount of processing you can do. So let's get into some of those details. All right, so here's a more detailed uh, layout. It's building on the image that you just saw, but in a little more detail. So to orient yourself, um, here would be the actual GPU cores of streaming multiprocessors. So SM0 and in an A100, we go up to 108, so 0 to 107. Uh, the reg stands for the registers, and the L1S is that shared uh, data cache, and most importantly, shared memory, also called as on-chip memory, scratch pad memory, et cetera. But it's a controllable memory with Triton uh, that you don't have control over when you're doing uh, PyTorch. So here is your uh, HBM global memory, as we mentioned. And on the right-hand side, this would be representative of your CPU along with the DRAM memory, so uh, and a PCIe interface to, to connect the two. So <laughs> going back to our previous example, we were talking about how moving from uh, HPM memory onto on-chip, so to speak, was uh, quite expensive. So um, this will actually be exemplified here by the latency. So if we were to access uh, from the streaming multiprocessor to access the uh, shared memory, it's only one X or one clock cycle, basically access to get the data and bring it in for work. So very fast. If it happens to reside on the L2 cache, 
then it's a 5x latency relative to picking uh, or pulling data from shared memory. Now by contrast, getting things from HBM memory is 15x slower. And so you can see this is a huge gap. Uh, if, if you have it local, it's, it's a 1x and it's 15 times slower here. And of course, if it's all, over, all the way over on CPU uh, DRAM memory, now you're talking 25x slower. So as you can see, it pays to basically try to offset the uh, performance of bottleneck by keeping things uh, in an intelligent way uh, here in your immediate shared memory. It gives very fast access so you can leverage the full processing power. Now this image is from the flash attention paper, but I think it calls it a very important point, which is the so-called uh, memory hierarchy. And that's what you are able to leverage uh, with Triton. So for example, going from the top down, we have our SRAM, which is that on-chip shared memory that I was talking about inside the stream, each individual streaming multiprocessor. As you can see, it's very fast, 19 terabytes per second, and also in aggregate, uh, very small, only 20 megs total. Uh, by contrast, as we move down the pyramid here, we go to GPU, HPM, global memory basically. And that's operating a speed of 1.5 terabytes per second for memory access and has 40 gig or it could be 80 gig depending on your card. But, but you see the point that it's substantially larger than the uh, SRAM memory. And of course, then we move out to CPU memory, which might be huge, might have over a terabyte, but it only operates at a speed of 12.8 gigabytes per second. So uh, this is a, kind of a good mental model to keep in mind uh, when we're working with kernels here. And now kind of moving from simplified uh, images to actual uh, images. So this is an A100 GPU layout. Uh, and just to orient yourself, uh, kind of working from top to bottom here. So here's our PCI Express, which would be the connection to the CPU. Uh, and on each side, we see the HPM memory uh, running down here and down here, our memory controller interface. So this is where the global memory that we we're talking about, our HPM memory lives. And then we move, we see the L2 cache here running down the middle. And then uh, I guess at the bottom, just for reference, we have our NV link, which is normally used to connect other GPUs inside a node. Uh, so that gives you very fast access for distributed training. Uh, but more pertinent for us, we now see that we have the SMs here all stacked up and arranged out here in rows of it looks like eight. Um, but this is the streaming multiprocessor itself. So running through here. And then as you'll see, when we dive into yet one more zoom here, the way that you program with thread blocks and how the warps interact and so forth will become, I think, a logical decomposition just based on the architecture of the GPU itself here. And now we get to the heart of it. So this is an actual uh, zoomed in view of a streaming multiprocessor. Um, and what we have is it's divided into four, at least for an A100 here, and wanted to sort of walk through the basic components that are involved. Um, so for example, if you have a Triton, you would program in blocks and maybe have 128 threads. <clears throat> and there typically a warp would be 32 threads. So that would be 32 times four, or you divide your 128 block into four. Each warp or one fourth of your block would get dropped onto each one of these individual uh, SM cores here or compute cores. And from there, the actual work would begin. Uh, now, referring to the shared memory that we talked about that was very fast yet very small, this is it down here, the L1 data cache. Uh, shared memory, so 192K on an A100, um, and this is where the actual processing would happen. A couple things to call out, each there's a warp scheduler for each of these compute cores, so we get four warp schedulers here, uh, and as I said, they each handle 32 threads, um, respectively. The other thing to call out is we have um, extremely large registers, so every thread is effectively a von Neumann processor. It has its own uh, set of registers that's available exclusively to it. And what that means is that you can launch hundreds of thousands of threads basically and have almost no context switch overhead, which is very different than the CPU situation. So here it's very much encouraged to have a high amount of threads and we'll get into the advantages of that. But the, the net is that with these large register files, uh, each thread can have its own uh, preserved state and the warp scheduler can flip between them for almost no overhead. So it's a very important thing to keep in mind as we get into things like oversubscription. So uh, the net is GPUs are uh, throughput machines, and as I mentioned, so it's really optimal to be running you know, literally hundreds of thousands of threads at the same time to keep these um, cores saturated with things to do. Um, just to give you a few more context, so these LDST, load store, this is for moving things from um, HBM onto uh, shared memory efficiently without uh, tying up thread work directly. The SFU is a special function unit. <laughs> That's for things like exponentiation, which we use when we code up softmax, for example, uh, and other uh, different mathematical functions, sine, cosine, et cetera. And the last thing to mention is down the bottom, you see this little text. So these are texture mapping units, which we'll not really be getting into here, uh, but that's for things like image rotation, resizing, uh, more specific to graphics type processing or visual uh, type work. So that gives you the, pretty much the layout. You have an L0 instruction cache, the warp scheduler, dispatch unit, 
uh, and the register files I mentioned, and of course your different cores here, tensor core being the one for primarily for a matrix uh, fuse multiply add or matrix multiplication, which we'll be dealing with, and uh, that gives you the layout, and like I said, most importantly, the uh, shared memory down here available to all four of these individual uh, cores. So finally, to summarize, um, kind of the number one performance issue that Triton uh, is, is helpful for overcoming is the fact that on GPUs, uh, it's not processing power. In other words, it's not flops that's our primary issue, it's, it's memory bandwidth. Um, and so we are basically very uh, memory bandwidth limited relative to the amount of compute that these streaming multiprocessors can do. And so this is a really nice slide from an NVIDIA uh, CUDA presentation. But basically they're talking about here, if you factor out, like if you had just a consistent stream of data coming in and these SMs all ready to crunch the numbers that are coming through, the net is that you have uh, 6x the computational power versus what you can actually move from global memory to uh, shared memory for actual processing. And so this is that 6.3x, now this is uh, on an A100, but the net is this is sort of the number one optimization that we want to do with Triton is to do things, uh, design algorithms or kernels specifically that can help overcome uh, this global memory bandwidth. And we'll do things like uh, latency hiding and so forth uh, with recomputes, concurrency, memory coalescing, oversubscribing, lots of stuff that we'll get into here uh, to, to develop intelligent and uh, highly performing algorithms designed to maximize the uh, GPU throughput. So hopefully that gives you a very good um, general overview. And like I said, a good Triton kernel, in my mind at least, is, is very much a co-design between the hardware uh, and the Triton uh, code itself. And so we'll get into that. We'll start with softmax and then get into some uh, vector addition, matrix, multi uh, matrix multiplication decompositions, and various ways to improve that leveraging shared memory. So hope this helps, and I'll see you in the next video.